Hi, I'm Alex Jordan from Learn Color Grading and FilmSimplified.com. And every time I create a new Resolve project, uh, there are two settings that I change every single time for every project. Now, not to say that anything is wrong with Resolve, this is my personal preference, but I just wanted to share with you what these settings are and why you might want to consider changing these settings in Resolve. Let's start. Every time I open a new project in Resolve, I open the settings, select general options, and if you scroll down, you have these settings here under color. The first thing I change is luminance mixer defaults to zero. I select that, so I activate luminance mixer defaults to zero, and I deactivate use its curve for contrast. So I'll click here, and I hit save, and that's all. And let's see what do these options do, and why do I change them personally. I'll revert everything back to its original state. So I'll just open the settings here, go back to uh, general options and deactivate, activate and save. And we're back to the original settings. And to understand these two settings, you have to understand something very important. Resolve is trying to make your work much easier. It's trying to recover the highlights and the exposure of the image automatically for you without you needing to do anything. That is not bad. That is actually great. However, you need to be aware of these changes because sometimes um, you, will, you will just change the colors in a certain way and it, the colors won't behave the same way you expect them to and you'll be a bit frustrated and then you'll discover that this is a feature in Resolve that is designed to uh, prevent you from sometimes overexposing the image. So let's take a look. In this image, I'll simply come to the contrast controller and I'll increase contrast. Now, when I increase contrast, take a look at the scopes here and notice the top area in the scopes and the bottom area. So I'll go to contrast increase and note that Resolve is automatically recovering the highlights and shadows. So what happened here is a lot of pixels are hitting a wall around the highlights and hitting a wall around shadows. These areas are holding a lot of pixels now and Resolve is trying to prevent these pixels from being overexposed by not crossing this line. And when I increase contrast, I want the dark areas, the black areas in the image to be pure black. And I don't want any recovery or something to prevent these pixels from becoming pure black. So let's reset, open the settings again, general options, and I will uncheck use S curve for contrast, save, and now take a look at the behavior of contrast. We just reset everything and we're back to the original state of the image. And now take a look at the RGB parade. I'll increase the contrast and note that Resolve is allowing these pixels to actually cross the line into becoming overexposed. So, or underexposed in this case. So again, getting the contrast back down, increasing the contrast. Notice that we don't have a lot of pixels here being prevented from crossing the line, you know, and becoming overexposed. And personally, I think this makes my work much easier because when you add contrast, a lot of the times what you're trying to do is to make the dark areas of the image really black and you can recover the highlights manually later it's, it's not hard at all so with uh, the s curve setting uh, turned off i'll increase contrast and look at her hair now i managed to make it uh, really black and this is a good look however i have some overexposed uh, areas here and overexposed areas can be recovered very easily for example by switching to log wheels and bringing the highlights down and i just recovered the highlights area that's one way so this was the first setting let's take a look at the other setting I usually change. To understand that setting, I'll simply switch from primaries wheels to primaries bars. So this is the primaries bars. And notice that I have this controller to the bottom here that says Loma Mix. Loma Mix is another way that Resolve is trying to prevent you from overexposing the image or changing the exposure a lot. How does it work? Take a look at the scopes here. I'll come to gain and I'll increase the green channel. And notice that when I increased the green channel, even though I pushed the green channel up, without me touching the red or the blue channels, they were both pushed down. And if I bring the green channel down, the other channels are being pushed up. And the same is true for blue pushing other channels down and up or the red channel. So when you control one of the channels, resolve tries to keep the exposure the same by counteracting your um, 
exposure adjustment for this channel by reducing or increasing the other channels. And this might be very helpful for a lot of people. If you're working on a fast project and all you need to do is to make the image just a bit more green, uh, it will work fine because Resolve will prevent you from you know, going overexposed with your image or maybe underexposed, and that is very great and helpful. However, what I want to do personally is to control the green channel without affecting the other channels, and that is pretty simple. What I need to do is to simply bring the LumaMix controller all the way down. So notice that now when I brought the LumaMix controller down to zero, now when I control the red channel, notice that I'm only controlling the red channel without affecting the other channels at all. So for example, let's reset this and let's say I want to bring the blue channel down in, in highlights and bring the uh, blue channel up in shadows, you know, for this look. Personally, that makes my life easier. So note that every time you bring the LumaMix control down and then you add a new node, so I'll simply go to color, nodes, and add a serial node. And now in the new node, the Luma Mixer went back to 100. So I need to bring the Luma Mixer from 100 to zero for every node, and sometimes I might forget to do that. So the solution is to come to the settings here, general options, and select luminance mixer defaults to zero. I'll select it, save, and now every time I add a new node, so I'll simply go to color, nodes, and add a serial node. In the new node, the Luma Mixer control is zero by default and you can increase it uh, for every node separately. One last note here, note that this only works if saturation is exactly at 50. So for example, the Luma mix now is zero and when I increase the uh, green or reduce the green channel, both channels are not affected at all, other channels. Let's reset and now we'll increase saturation and note that even though Luma mix is zero, when I change gain now for green, Resolve went back into affecting the other channels. So if you need to increase saturation, I would recommend that you increase saturation in one node. And let's add a new node, color nodes add serial node. And in this new node, I can control the uh, gain of green without affecting the other channels because if saturation is changed in the same node, Resolve goes back to the behavior of uh, trying to prevent you from overexposing or underexposing the image. Note that these are not problems. This is actually These are actually very good features. Uh, however, you need to be aware of these features that, so that when you add contrast and the image still looks a bit washed out. So the black pixels aren't exactly black and you keep on pushing the contrast and nothing is happening. The the image still doesn't look very contrasty. At least you know that this is the setting to change where contrast will go back into the behavior of allowing the dark pixels to become uh, pure black. So uh, if you like this, please visit us at filmsimplified.com where you can join our free crash course um, that is designed for the absolute beginner and takes you through every single tab in Resolve. Thank you. Filmsimplified.com